Hey, my name is Lucky Bud, and today I'm going to show you how I do deep sky astrophotography on an alt as mount. So the first thing you probably want to know is what is an alt as mount? Well, an alt azimuth mount is an is a mount that you put your telescope on that only has one arm or in some cases two arms and the entire telescope is balanced on that arm as opposed to a German equatorial mount where you need to have a view of Polaris or the North Star in order to orient your telescope with the sky. You don't need to do that with an alt as so that's one advantage as to why I like it. But another reason why I really love this mount is because it's so light, I can just pick it up and take it where I want to go. And I can just set up and I can be up and shooting within a couple of minutes. I've had a lot of success shooting things like nebulas and galaxies and planets with this particular setup. And the concepts that you need to know in order to be able to be successful with your astrophotography really doesn't matter what it is, how it's configured. I'll just walk you through some of the stuff. So right now I have a dew shield on the front of my telescope. The telescope only goes to about here and I'm using something called a hyperstar and a camera in the front, which gives me a really good advantage for taking uh, photos of things like nebulas, which I'm going to try to go for tonight. It's really cloudy right now, but apparently it's going to be clear. So the things that you need to know when you're going to do astrophotography, whether you have your camera on the back or you have your camera on the front, you only have control over a couple things. So the first thing you need to have is great balance. So what you do is you get yourself ready as if you were about to shoot. So take off your lens cap and you want to make sure that your scope is balanced right here. And so if I set up with my Hyperstar, I'll do this once and then I don't touch it for a couple months. So right now it should be pretty balanced. So what I do is I undo this crank and as you can see, the telescope doesn't move. And if I move it this way, it doesn't move. And if I move it this way, it still doesn't move because it's properly balanced. If it's not properly balanced and it's swaying one way or the other, all you need to do is loosen the crank down here and move your telescope along this axis here and keep tightening it until you get it to a point where it'll stay like this. The other thing that you need to be able to do is you need to have control over your level. So go out to the site where you're going to be doing your shots and have a good look at your bubble level. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your scope is totally level. As you can see right now, it's not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so that it will be. So I'm going to adjust this leg. Yeah, that looks like I'm almost there and I'll tighten that one up and then it looks like I need to do another adjustment on this one Let me lower that one a little bit and we are looking pretty good and now as you can see the bubble is pretty close to the middle I might adjust it just a little bit more this way I'll show you what it looks like when it's done so that took me all of about I don't know 25 seconds and we are totally level and we are ready to go so now that that's all done, all I need to do is wait till it's dark and hopefully it'll be clear. And I turn on my star sense and it will orient me in the sky and I focus. And the only thing that I need for focus is a Batonov mask and my computer and the software that I use. The, Z the ASI Studio Creative Suite. And I will walk you through what happens once it gets dark and I will walk you through how I do astrophotography. Okay, welcome back. As you've seen, this has all gone pretty quickly so far. So what I did once I came outside was I found a spot and I made sure that I had really good level and I waited till it got dark. That whole thing only took just to do the level about 30 seconds. And then uh, I did my star sense, which took about two minutes. And now I'm going to work on my focus. So what I've done is I've slewed to a star, a Betelgeuse, and I'm set my exposure to a quarter of a second. And I'm going to put my Batonov mask on. And with my Batonov mask, it is showing me that my focus from my last session is still pretty freaking perfect. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that. Uh, I'm really, really happy. So you go in and you take a look. And if you need to adjust, this is what you're going for as far as your star looks like. So I'm really happy with that. So I am going to now slew to the target 
that I would like to image tonight. Um, let's do the Rosette Nebula. I think that's a really good one for tonight because ultimately it is Valentine's Day. So let's check out the Rosette and let's remember to take off the Batmelv mask and we are going to slew to the Rosette. Okay, so we are slewed over to the Rosette Nebula and uh, I know that I have my stars right in the middle of the middle of the nebula, so now I'm taking a 30 second exposure to see how the stars look, because that's really what I'm looking for, is nice round stars. Uh, with a hyper star, with 30 seconds you can get really really sharp nebulas, uh, especially because I'm using an IDAS NBZ filter, because it's a full moon. So let's take a look at how these stars look. Yeah, so there we go. So what I do is I zoom in and uh, I take a look. You can see the nebula pretty nice. See, those stars are looking a little bit long to me, so I'm not sure if 30 seconds is going to be great for tonight on this particular target, but uh, I always like to give it a second one and see. Uh, at F2, obviously the nebula comes out really well with the hyperstar, but I'll post some photos at the end that I've done of nebulas and galaxy at F7 with the focal reducer. You can get amazing astrophotography with only 20, 25, or 30 second exposures. So let's see how this one looks. Yeah, stars are looking a little bit more round, but you know, I think in order to be safe and have nice, beautiful stars, I will go for 25 second exposures. That's the way to go tonight. Okay, so I am uh, just setting this up for 25 second exposures. We're going to start shooting right now. And uh, yeah, we'll just take a look at how the stars look when this first 25 second exposure happens. And I have a feeling we're going to be really happy with the results. And then I'm going to let it go. I think star uh, clouds are going to be coming in and out tonight, but we will do the best we can. And if I've done my job pretty well, I shouldn't really have to adjust anything. Um because what I want will stay fairly in the center of the frame for hours. So uh, with any luck, it'll go well. So now let's zoom in here and take a look. And yeah, as you can see, those stars are looking good. Let's go out to the edges. Stars are all looking pretty round. Yeah, we're going to be happy with 25 second exposures tonight. Let's see if we can nab about uh, 250 of them or so. And uh, hopefully we will be off and running. Okay, so I just want to say I'm really, really happy with how this is going so far. Um, 22 frames in, and you'll see when this frame turns over, my stars are not moving at all, which means that my alignment is great, and my balance is great, and my level is great, and that's ultimately what we're going for. So, pretty happy with how this is going. And I'm uh, thinking that at the end of the night, I will do some stacking, and I will show my stacking when it's done. The program I use is Astro Pixel Processor. It's awesome. So I will be able to show you how this is all shaping up once we are done a good long session. So here's what it looks like. As you can see, it needs a bit of cropping and a bit of cleaning up. You might want to use a tool like StarNet++ or another tool to reduce some of your stars. Play with it in Lightroom, give it a crop, play with some of the settings there and make it look exactly how you like it. This is what it looks like now that I am done my post-production.